Hello, I'm Jackie. And I'm with Woodstock Public Library, and I welcome everyone tonight to this very special event where we are going to be discussing Indigenous knowledge and language. Uh, to start with, I'd like to make a Indigenous acknowledgement. The Woodstock Public Library is situated on the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples and covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. The Library Board would like to acknowledge the history of the traditional territory on which the library stands, and we would also like to respect the long-standing relationships of the local Indigenous groups, the Holosande, Lapine, and the Anishabek of this land and place in southwestern Ontario. We also like to recognize Indigenous communities in the close proximity to Woodstock, the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, the Oneida Nation of the Thames, the Muncie Delaware Nation, Mississaugas of New Credit First Nation, and the Six Nations of the Grand. So this journey was started by asking for help from Nancy Cooper, who is Indigenous Advisor for Ontario Library Service, who recommended that I speak to Achilles Gentle, the owner of Good Minds Bookstore in Brantford. Make a wish to both of them for their support. It is only through them that I found tonight's speaker, Dr. David Aronson. Ani Bozo, <laughs> which is welcome and very rough translation. <laughs> um, so Dr. David Aronson received his doctorate in Indigenous education from Seven Generation, Generations Educational Institute in Ontario in 2016. He has spent the past 30 years as an Indigenous educator, working with the First Nations communities on policy, curriculum, resources, and community development. He has also been an elementary school classroom teacher and Indigenous teacher educator for a number of post-secondary institutions in Ontario and Manitoba. He is a proud father of two beautiful children and recently received his third degree in the Minwiwiwigan Lodge at Roseau River First Nation. He is currently an educator consult education consultant with goodminds.com where he pre reviews publications, works with librarians and teachers to promote Indigenous literature and languages. Let's talk about his vision. Today's vision is to ensure Indigenous knowledge is available to all our relatives and relations. His goal is to ensure our Indigenous language and knowledge will remain strong for all of our children and our children's children. Welcome, Dave. And you have gone small again, Dave. <laughs> we need to get that full screen up. So I'm just going to stop my video and take myself out. Can you hear me? I can. As soon as I start talking, maybe the screen will change. It is. There we go. Okay. So, um, Dave, I'm leaving it for you to take over, and thank you for being here this evening. And I'm my ears are open as well as my mind to hear what you have to share. Miigwech, miigwech. Ojun in the way magne dog, wa wa ba ganojin indish na kaz makwa ndo dem tene inishinabi ndal akokin ndunjaba this way mede inini. That's the language of the Anishinaabe sometimes called Ojibwe, sometimes in America called Chippewa, but it's my greeting to you and welcome. Uh, Athlanite, that's how you say hello in, in Dene, uh, Sego or Seguli in uh, uh, Ungwehoe. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to say hello. And it's uh, just the languages that are of, of this land are, are so important. And the teachings of the language, when you say Bojo, you're not trying to speak French. We're trying to remember our, the first person who walked on this land, and that was Nana Bojo, or Wena Bojo. And we remember our, 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 our uncle who walked this land and, and, and set it up for us, set us, set us straight. Creator made this land and Nana Bojo walked and he fussed around a little bit and made a mountains here and rivers there and, and named everybody. He named everybody. And we remember Wayne Bojo or Nana Bojo when we say Bojo. Remember, remember where we come from. Remember our first teacher. Our first teacher is sleeping, waiting, watching us, dreaming of us. 
our first teacher is he's up in a place called Thunder Bay. And if you're standing on a on the shores of Thunder Bay and looking out over the water, you'll see our teacher sleeping, waiting in case he has to come back and smarten us up. So every time I go to Thunder Bay, I just walk look over the look over the water to make sure he's still sleeping and not out to kick her out, kick her. <clears throat> Remind us of our teachings. I see a lot of names. Can I just get a thumbs up? Uh, everybody here? If you know how to do the thumbs up, there we go. Bojo, bojo, bojo. I'm glad to see you all and uh, see your names. I will, uh, the chat is available for all of you uh, if you have questions. Uh, or need me to talk about something that you're primarily interested in by all means, because I uh, I do go on sometimes, and I trust I can give you um, present something that that is uh, that that helps on your road to knowledge. So I'll start with that. Our road to knowledge is eternal. Uh, one of my elders, Badway with Benesi Iban uh, Eddie Bentenbach, he's passed. But he wrote a really cool book that should be in your library. It's called the Mashomas Book. Mashomo's book is the teachings of the of the Anishinaabe. And it sets out in a really cool way, because Bad Wewodin was a gentle man. He sets out our story for everybody, for everybody, for all of us. And it's important that we remember because one of the stories in his book, the Mashomo's book, is is about this the the, the uh, uh, seven fires. The seven fires, and at each each age, Anishinaabe, we knew a lot about, you know, we knew a lot of stuff, and our stories have all this information, all this ideas. We didn't have encyclopedias, we didn't have books, we had elders, we had grandmothers and grandfathers and medicine keepers. We had people who, who kept the knowledge alive, didn't need encyclopedias and papyrus and all that other stuff. We had elders, and we listened. But this is the time of the seventh fire. And at the time of the seventh fire is a time that we're all going to either together, work together to decide what we're going to do for our children's children's children. Because it's up to us. There's been a lot of stuff behind us. And our job is to stand and look behind seven generations, say, where did we come from? What's happened behind us? What's all that stuff that's happened behind us? Holy. Seven generations ago, we had some guy named Christopher Columbus come by and, and change everything. We had John Cabot. You know the story of John Cabot when he came across from, from England? His boats ran aground, he thought. But it wasn't he ran aground. He ran into all the cod. His boat stalled in the ocean over by that place called, we call Newfoundland. We're going to stall because there were so many fish. Can you imagine that? So many fish and his boat stopped. Holy. And yet we, what did we do to all this fish? Don't we look back and we saw that's what, that's what John Cabot saw. That's what John Cabot claimed. And yet can we eat cod today? Can we find cod today? Huh? When we look back seven generations, we see that this land was, Beautiful, it still is beautiful, but what's changed in those seven generations? Where you are down there, these, they, there was something called the king's tree. Are you familiar with the king's tree? It's a tree so big that seven men, look at seven men, it might be four men. Four men could put their arms around this tree, hang on and put their arms around the tree, four men. And if four men could do that, that tree belonged to the king, not you. Can't build their home with it. The king was going to cut it down and use it for their use it for their boats, for those big masts. It was a king's tree. Holy! And down where you are, the white pine were huge. They were huge. How many of you see a big, huge white pine that you could four men could put their arms around right now? What's changed in those seven generations? What's changed? 
We look back at those seven generations and see all this stuff that's happened. Nishnabi, you're all over this land. There's a book, hard to get, but there's a book called 500 Nations. There were 500 different nations on this land we call Turtle Island. 500 nations, 500 languages. Nations with their own creation story that say, this is where we were put. Every creation story says, this is where our creator put us. You've seen the stumps, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool, yeah. Creator put us on this land and gave us a way of live, a way of life. Each nation has their own teaching and their own creation story and their own language, their own way of being. Then it would have a really cool way of being and it's really important that they follow that way of being. Keeps them healthy, keeps them happy. The Dene have a way of being, which is a little bit different from the from the Inuit, even though they're close up in the Northwest Territories. Each nation has their own way in the Meshkigo down in the, uh, from Florida, they have a whole different way of being and they would not survive using their way of being up in the, ter up in the Northwest Territories because it's a whole different way of being. We all were given ways of living a good life. Mino Bamatsuan, Mino Pematisuan, that good life on this land. Creator gave it to all of us, all of us, you and me, the trees, the grass, the deer, the water, all of this for a good life. And when we look back those seven generations, we see, holy, things have changed so much. Things have changed so much. And we have to think about why, why did things change so much? Anishinaabe were here. I heard one story that the word Indian comes from that guy Columbus. He landed and saw people living in Deos, in Deos, in God's way. That's a story I heard. I don't know how true it is and I can't find any other reference, but I, there are a couple of people who think that's, that's where the word Indian comes from, in Deos. We're living in God's way. How cool is that? How cool is that? And yet he was looking for gold and looking for land and looking for anything he could give the king so the king could say, oh, now we can pay for this. Now we can prosper from it. Now we can profit from this land. Now we can profit from your trip. Profit, profit, profit. What an interesting word, profit. He was prophetic may be profitable. The land we're on has been here forever. It was created when earth was created, of course. And our land here, Turtle Island is special. And I just wanted to add to, to what Jackie acknowledged at the beginning about the land. It's not just the land to acknowledge, but it's our ancestors, all our ancestors, all those who have come here, recognize and honor them, acknowledge them. Those ancestors who came, the Nishnabe and the Haudenosaunee, the Ungwehoe, the Abenaki, the Wendat, the Lakotas, the Dene, all the Nishnabe, all the people who have been here since the beginning of time. When we were put on this land, there was nowhere else. We didn't come from somewhere else. We were put on this land. There's nowhere else for us to go back to. So we acknowledge the land as, as, our, as our mother, we landed with all the gifts of life and all our ancestors who have been here since the beginning of time. All those who have walked on this land and whose trails we follow. Acknowledge those as well. And those who are here, the, the four-legged and the winged ones and the crawlers and the swimmers, our relatives, they were here before us. They were here before human beings, we were the last to be created. All the creation stories, I don't know of any creation story that says we were created first. All the creation stories I know say we were created last. How cool is that? In some teachings, of course, that means we should be humble. Humble. We were the last to be created. This creation, all of, they don't need us. 
that tree can grow without us just fine, thank you very much. Doesn't need us one bit. And yet we affect that tree with our cars and our gases and our chainsaws. That's what we do. How do we acknowledge that tree, the beauty of that tree? Oh, it's a beautiful tree, I'll paint it. I'll take a picture of it, I'll put it up on the wall. <clears throat> Do we water it? Do we make sure that we keep it away from, or keep our, our stinky gas machines away from it? Well, I, you can see the trailer I got right beside it, so. Not really. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard, and yet we strive to do the best we can. We strive to do the best we can, because that's all we can do is the best we can. And when we look at our seven generations behind us, and we see all those changes, and we see where we've come from and the knowledge that's been saved and secured and the knowledge has been lost. As, as, as Jackie mentioned, I, I, I've been teaching in faculties of education and I say, what's one of the neatest things is, is, uh, is to do a little thing about the, the, uh, the frying pan or a cast iron pot. What did our ancestors think of this cast iron pot that just came up for us and this guy, this guy with a long beard, stinky beard came and put this cast iron pot from him. Grandmother said, what the heck is that? And they bang it and they hit it and maybe put it on their head, think it's a hat. Who knows, my students did all kinds of things with it. But what changed when we got that cast iron pot? What changed in our lives? What knowledge was lost when we took on that cast iron pot? All kinds of stuff was lost. The Shinabi Equay stopped making birch bark baskets. Birch bark baskets where you could boil water and cook your stew. Birch bark baskets where you could, where you could uh, gather your berries. Lost all those arts because we got, now. we don't need those things. We got cast iron pots now. Don't need a cast iron pot. We lost our relationship with Wigwast, Birch Tree, the arts. And we lost our, our relationship with, with Jack Pine and the sap and balsam and the sap that we use to, to secure that, that birch bark basket, make it waterproof. And we lost the thought of how do you boil water in a birch bark basket? Hmm. Our ancestors were science, scientists. They knew, they knew stuff. Our ancestors were scientists and engineers and physicists and doctors, they knew all kinds of stuff. How do you boil water in a birch bark basket? Put your hand up if you know how. Uh -huh. What's the matter with you guys? Basic science. <laughs> we knew this stuff, how to boil water in a birch bark basket, but we were called savages. They said we didn't know anything. They call us nomads, wanderers, hunters and gatherers. And yet all our science, all our medicines kept us alive for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years since the beginning of time we've been here. Language, words have power. You call us, you call us savages long enough, we're gonna start thinking we are savage, aren't we? We're gonna start forgetting, oh, we got, our knowledge isn't as good as yours. Yeah, well, we know how to boil water in a birch bark basket. Can you? All the stuff that we knew has either been appropriated, stolen or lost. You know, Anishinaabe had a really cool invention, piece of engineering, engine engineering. It's called a canoe, it's ours. We knew how to make one. We knew how, how to engineer it, manufacture it produce it, take care of it. And we knew the raw materials and we knew the process and we took advantage of all those things. And we said miigwech, miigwech, miigwech to all of creation for sharing wigwas, for sharing the sap and the cedar and the spruce roots that we used to build this. And to our ancestors who, who dreamed how to build this and taught us all how to build this. But now you, you'd never know it was a Anishinaabe uh, 
piece of engineering, you think it was Katie and Tyra special. And you forget, we forget, we forget. We don't look back and say, where the heck did that come? Kayak, same thing. Well, they knew what, how to do that. They knew the math. They knew the mathematics of it. And they did the math. This long for this piece of part of the canoe, for the kayak and, and, and the width of my shoulders for another width of, of the kayak. They knew that and they proportioned it properly. Each, each kayak was, was built specifically for each individual. Who said we didn't know mathematics? Of course we knew mathematics, had to know mathematics. It's really cool what Nishinaabe have, when we look back with the, the knowledge, and the teachings. And we look around today and say, where is our knowledge and our teachings? Well, it's still here. And we're still trying to get people to listen, to listen about this good life and the gifts and our relationship to all of creation. And maybe, maybe people will start listening because they're starting to get the idea when you don't pay attention to all of creation, creation gets a little bit pissed off at you. Florida, Newfoundland, that doesn't happen by accident. That's, that's, that's mother nature saying, wait a minute, you guys, you're not paying attention. You're not in relationship with all of creation. You see a tree, you want to cut it down. You see a forest, you want to cut it down. You see a, you see a, a prairie and you want to dig up the, the, the natural soil and the natural plants and you want to put sunflowers in there. And you forget all about the three sisters. You forget all about the three sisters. How smart were the Haudenosaunee? They were biologists. They were chemists. They knew stuff. They were agronomers, agriculturalists. The three sisters. You know that story. It's right from your territory down there. You know, the corn, the bean, the squash. The corn grows up tall so the beans can crawl up on, on top of it. And the beans, that's, that's the really cool part. The beans have a really special property. They put nutrients back in the earth. The nitrogen from the air, they put it back in the earth so that the squash can grow and the corn can grow. And the squash has those big leaves so that it protects the soil, keeps it moist. Corns and beans and squash, they do this stuff. It's not just a, a nice myth or a nice legend. It's science. But we take our science and people have taken our science and they call it, oh, that's a nice legend of the three sisters. Not a legend, science. Because our ancestors knew the science of, of good agriculture, good growing methods, good teachings of how to live on this land and in relationship to all of creation. They left what they could behind us, for us. And if we look back and see where, where we come from, we'll see what, what they left for us, for us to pick up, for all of us to pick up. It's not just for Anishinaabe, it's for all of us. Because you came to this land, people came to this land, and was being the game, come on in. Columbus was welcomed with a feast in a traditional Anishinaabe way, the Arab way, or is there Arawak way, not Arab, Arawak way, in a Carib way. Come on, sit down, have a have a good have something to eat. You stinky, smelly. They didn't complain about those stinky, smelly sailors. They were on that boat for what 60 days? Maybe it was only 35, 45 days. No bath, no razors, no soap. Stinky old men. Some of them just come out of jail. Some of them just they picked up off the street because they were drunk. Put them on those three ships. You can imagine what they smell like. You probably smell them from 100 miles away. Oh, oh, somebody's coming. You can smell them. Smell them a mile away. Smell them 100 miles away. Did they complain? Nah. Be in the game. Come on and sit down. We'll, we'll feed you. We'll feast you. We'll welcome you. We'll show you how we live on this land. So you can live on this land with us together. We can live on this land together. The whole truth and the story of the whole, the history is not just his story. We're going to say the whole story. 
the whole story of Christopher Columbus, the whole story of the Puritans. The Abenaki, the Pashkmakwadi, they, they welcomed those Puritans who, were, who got here in November in the cold. And the Pashkmakwadi, they gave them clothes, they gave them food, gave them shelter for the winter. What do those Puritans do as soon as they became spring? They put up a fence around their, their community and kept those Indians out. Even though those Indians had welcomed them and fed them and kept them alive, a big fence. Interesting. That's, that's, that's part of the story. It's part of the story. It's part of the whole story. You don't hear that. You just see the Puritans with their hats and we thank goodness for Puritans because we have Thanksgiving. Where the heck do you think they got the idea? Where the heck do you think they got the turkey and the potatoes and the corn and the beans? And the squash, the Puritans would bring that with them to make this whole really wonderful thing called Thanksgiving? No. They were the gifts from here. We taught them how to grow the corn and the bean and squash. We taught them how to hunt the turkey and the deer. We showed them how to live a good life on this land and, and give thanks and give thanks in the Anishinaabe way. Celebrate life, this good life. It's a wonderful thing, this good life. The languages of this land, there's all kinds of languages, just as many languages as there were nations, of course. And you took on some of these languages and you uh, appropriated some of our names. I'm right here in this place called Manitoba, Manitowabi. Lake Manitowabi. It's a Anishinaabe name. You're, some of you were in this place called uh, uh, Toronto, another Anishinaabe name. I grew, lived many years in a place in the west end of Toronto called Mimico, which is beside Etobicoke, which is beside Mississauga. All these nice Anishinaabe names that are in the language. We just appropriated them and just called them Tarana. Yeah, really cool. The language is everywhere. You guys are living close to that small city called Brantford. I wonder who that's named after. Hmm. When you look back behind us and, and see what, what Joseph Brandt did and, and, and what he wanted to do. <coughs> Some of his contemporaries like Tecumseh, what they wanted to do, they saw that these newcomers kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming. And they wanted to make sure there was enough land for them. The Americans, those guys down south, they, they promised, oh, we're just going to go to the, to, the, uh, to the Appalachians there. We're just going to go that far. Until, of course, Cleveland was full and they kept going. They were just going to go as far as the Mississippi. Well, once St. Louis got full, they kept going. They weren't going to go too much further than the Rockies, because the Rockies were there, but Somehow they got through them too. And Canada's look back at this Canadian history. This, this guy named Johnny McDonald wanted to create this country from sea to shining sea. And he sent out a bunch of commissioners to sign treaties because that was the way it was supposed to be. Sign a treaty, he said uh, King George II, King George III, the proclamation of 1763, King George II. You got to sign a treaty because of they really have ownership, apparently. Our ancestors signed treaty because they said, let's live on this land together. And the first treaty was that two row wampum, two rows. And I don't have a picture of it. I'm sorry, I tried to get a, some pictures going, but two rows. You walk your road on this land and we'll walk our road on this land together. You don't tell us what to do. We won't tell you what to do. We'll share what we have. We're share all not, we're, we will share our knowledge and we'll learn. We'll, we'll let you learn who we are and how to live on this land. And we'll learn how, who you are so we can live together on this land. That's what the two road wampum is. Two rows, two roads, two rows. That's what that's about. Friendship, living together on this land. There's so much. Creator gave us so much. Clean water. Anytime you're thirsty, go get a scoop it up with water. 
Lake Superior, that creek down the road from you. All the water, water, the blood of Mother Earth, water, a gift of life. Yeah, well, that gift of life, we forget that whatever you do to your to, to the water, you're going to do to yourselves. Whatever you do to the water, you're going to do to yourselves because 85% of our body is water. So what have you just done? You polluted the water. Well, now we start to pollute our bodies. You, you, you dismiss your water, you dismiss your bodies. And don't take care of the water, you don't take care of yourselves. Taking care of the water is so important. So important to all of us. We're not going to... How long can we last without water? Three days, is it? Three days before we start going nuts. Four days we start drying up. Five days our brain starts to swell up or shrink up. Water. And yet, what do we do to the water? What have we done to the water? And we look back behind us and say, what have we done to the water? Holy. Remember that lake just south of you? That Lake Erie that, um, that they declared dead 20 years ago, 30, no, it must have been 40 years ago. They declared that a dead lake, that Lake Erie. Dead. Can you imagine how much chemical was in there? How much pollution? It's gone somewhere. I'm not sure where. That ocean, I think, out towards those beautiful corals that we like to see in the National Geographics. Those corals are facing the similar fate as Lake Erie. So we don't know smart. We're not smart enough to, to figure out, take care of the water, take care of the land. And we look back behind us and say, what the heck happened here? This land was beautiful. Yeah, it still is beautiful. We, we've, we've kept national parks and provincial parks. We tried to preserve some places. Yeah, that place called Algonquin Park. Yeah, yeah. Province of Ontario created Algonquin Park so that they wouldn't cut down all the trees in, North, in, in, in Southern Ontario. There'll be a, a preserve. We'll preserve and make sure that there's, there's land and, and trees available in Algonquin Park. Yeah, well, that lasted about 90 years before they start cutting down trees in Algonquin Park. And what was that president doing down south? And when he was president, he was, oh, yeah, go cut down all the trees in the National Park. Go build a pipeline in Alaska. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because the other side of that teaching of the seven fires is not just to look behind us, but to look ahead of us. Look ahead to see what, what are we going to leave for our children? What are we going to leave for our children's children? What are we going to leave for our children's 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 children? Seven generations ahead of us. Because what we do today will affect not just me, and my children, but my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren, seven generations ahead, they're going to have to deal with my mess. Just like those seven who made the decision to pick up that frying pan seven generations ago. Now look at us. We have these silly things in our hand. We walk around and we stare at these things and, and we got to, and our kids are playing on them now. That's what happens when you pick up a frying pan and forget about the birch bark basket. That's what happens. Imagine what's going to happen because of what we're doing today. <gasps> we're shooting, we're shooting, astro we're shooting rockets at asteroids to make sure that they don't hit Earth. Holy! Seven generations from now, what are they going to be doing? Are they going to be living on Mars? We're not going to be living much further because apparently, and I've I've looked at this, nothing travels faster than the speed of light except on Star Trek. Yeah, I guess that's a Star Trek. It's the only place where you can go faster than the speed of light. But uh, if you can't go faster than the speed of light, 26 years to the nearest star, 26 years. And in those 26 years, you may be traveling for 26 years and we've progressed how many? 500,000 years? We, we, we will have gone for our, I don't know, Einstein had this real thing, this relativity thing. You may be going at the speed of light, 
but we're still traveling. So anyway, we're not going anywhere. So unless we find those wormholes. But that's for the future generation. Are we going to get there? Are they going to get there? Well, we just had uh, this thing called Ian's just blowing up a big storm. And was it Fiona just a couple weeks ago with it blowing up a storm? And that's going to keep going until we start thinking we best do something. We best think about our relationship to all of creation. We best start thinking about being responsible for what we do, we, respecting all of creation and giving back, giving back, reciprocating, giving back to this earth, things that we've taken. How do we do that when we get these, we still have this, this idea of, of the doctrine of discovery. Oh, it's okay. We're, we're just going to go to make a profit. We're going to make money. We need to, we need to progress. This really cool English word progress. It's about progress. It's about industry. It's about making things better. Yeah. How are, how are we better now than my great, great grandmother up in the Northwest territories? How are we, how much, how better are we? We can do cooler things. I mean, boy. And I got hot sauce when I want. But am I any better? Am I, am I living a better life? Are we living a better life? Are we, are we living? Are, are the, our relatives living a better life because of us? Is this earth living a better life because of us? Ooh. I might be having a really cool home and I, you know, got a really big mortgage and I'm working real hard to pay off a mortgage and a fancy car. Am I better off? Am I sharing with my neighbors? Do I know my neighbors? Are my neighbors sharing with me? Are we helping each other? Are we, are we respectful of each other and all of creation? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? And that's, those are the things we should be for our children's children. Hey Dave, you're frozen. Um, I'm trying to tech. <laughs> okay, hey, I we're think good. we're back. <laughs> well, that's nice. Thank you, I everyone, just... for your patience as this little hiccup in technology, which is sort of what you're speaking of. <laughs> no problem. Please continue, Dave. Um. <laughs> Frame of mind is what I was talking about. And, and the idea of, of when Columbus brought, brought the uh, air wax back and, 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 and showed him to the to the to his to his uh, royal to the to the to his to his uh, royal uh, conglomerate, his royal uh, audience, and 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 they looked at and said, Well, what are these people? They can't speak English, or they can't speak Spanish, they don't know Latin, uh, they they're poorly dressed. And, and uh, uh, they don't have a king and they don't seem to have any industry. And they certainly, I, you know, Columbus did not see a church. He didn't see a church anywhere. Uh, and there wasn't an army that met him. It was the community met him and celebrated and feasted him. It wasn't an army. So what are these Europeans supposed to think? You know, no army, no church, no king, no real city. We must be savages, we must be heathens. Maybe they're not even human because they can't speak any of our languages. Holy, a way of thinking. Holy, why would you come to that conclusion? Because they didn't know better. They all waved Christopher Columbus goodbye because they thought he was going to fall off the edge of the earth, of course. So yeah, they had all kinds of misconceptions and different ideas about the world. But to think that we weren't human, and for the Pope to actually say that, 
and to send out his missionaries to missionize us. Interesting way of thinking. When we knew they were coming, because it's in that seven fires prophecy, we knew they were coming. And we got ready for them. We welcomed them. And we had a whole different way of thinking. Welcome them. Bean the game. Come on and have some supper. You look cold. We'll give you some clothes. You don't have a place to stay tonight. We'll make sure you got a place to stay tonight. And if you need the winter, we'll build you something for the winter. Bean the game. These smelly, smelly soldiers with their long beards and stinky clothes and those weird things that they had. We didn't call them savages. We called them odd, maybe, not savages. We didn't try to subvert them, convert them. No, enslave them. No, we didn't do any of that. We welcomed them. Whole different way of thinking. Whole different way of thinking. And when you look, you say, well, you know, look at those seven generations behind us. And say, well, where did that European way of thinking get us? Where would we have gotten if we had to listen to our elders, those Arawaks and those Caribs and, and the Seminoles and Pashkamakwadi and the Mi'kmaq? Where would we, where would we have been if, if some of those people who came across had listened to them? What kind of country would we have if, was, if we had to listen to them and accepted accepted what was being offered to us, this beautiful life, this mino bamazo, this beautiful life. Don't need all this stuff. Heck, I worked up in northern Manitoba, a place called the Paw Manitoba. It's really special in that, that part of the country. The clay is really special. It's unique, they say, in geolog ge geological terms. And yet the clay from, clay pots from that, Opasquiat Cree Nation. We're found 2,000 miles south of here in, in a place called Missouri. Now, how'd that happen? We didn't have cars. We didn't have transport planes. We didn't have buses, railways. But somehow the pots from northern Manitoba got all the way down to Missouri. Hmm. Wonder how that happened. And when we look back, we see that our ancestors had. They knew this way around this country. They knew their way around this country. They could get anywhere. And they did. What does Toronto mean? I think that means a meeting place. And the copper from Sudbury was, was, was mined in Sudbury and by the Anishinaabe and sold and traded in Toronto to those uh, Pushkamakwadi down in, in Maine. We got ourselves around here. Winnipeg is a... Another gathering place, the forks of the, of, of the Assiniboine and the Red Rivers. People come from all across the West, all from the South, all the way up from, from St. Louis. And they would gather in Winnipeg and they would feast and they would trade and they would dance and they would celebrate. Do we, do we remember those parts of our history? Do we talk about those parts of our knowledge and our, our story? Or we just think, oh, those Indians, they were hunters and gatherers and wandered around. They just wandered around through wanderers. Nomads, I think those, those English words are, what are we saying when we say that? And how do we denigrate all the knowledge and the wisdom, the languages and the people who lived such a good life on this land? Do we want to share that or do we want to ignore it? Well, tomorrow was a really special day, as most of you know, I'm sure. It's, you know, some of you may get the day off of work or something for truth and reconciliation. And it is about talking about the truth. That's, I'm really honored that you are here listening to, to this. I'm telling you the story, a story, a story as I see it, a story that as, I, as I know it. And yes, there's lots of good facts in what I'm telling you. There might be some exaggerations, but it's a story. It's a story that needs to be told. Columbus was not a nice guy. Samuel de Champlain was not a nice guy. Ask any Haudenosaunee about that. He was not a nice guy. And that's learning, our learning, our responsibility 
if we're going to reconcile the past, if we're going to reconcile what happened behind us, we have to know this stuff. We have to know the whole story. Yes, we can say the truth. Whose truth? My truth? Your truth? The truth? Is there the truth? There is a truth. There is truth. One of the teachings, there is truth. What do I know in my heart? What do I know in my heart to be true? I know in my heart, there's lots of stuff my, 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 my people are doing today that is hurtful. That is a truth. And we are reconciling that. So I want to make a big stink of it. I'll do what I can to help those who are hurting. That's what I will do. That's my truth. We have a guy, there's a, there's a man running in, for mayor here in, 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 in Winnipeg. And last week he came out and said, those Indian men, they're violent. You need to do something with those Indian men who are violent against women. And of course, a white man saying that about Nishnabe play, Nishnabe and any, I don't think so. There's a better way of doing things. There's a better way of using this English language. This English language is, we're savages. We mind being Indians. Les savages en français. There's a better way to communicate, better way to tell our story. And it starts with that respect. It starts with that responsibility and understanding relationship with each other. And it's those things that truth and reconciliation is talking about. It's understanding. When we look back, how did, how did 215 or 260, 600, how many of those kids are gone? How many kids are, it's finding the truth of that and understanding the truth. Why aren't we teaching these? Why, doesn't, why didn't you know about this in, in school? Why didn't I learn this in school? Because we're just savages, apparently. Well, that's not true now, is it? We are here. We've been here since the beginning of time, and we're going to, there's nowhere else for us to go, sorry. There's nowhere for the Haudenosaunee to go. There's nowhere for the Dene to go. There's nowhere for the Abenaki to go. There's nowhere for the Shushwap to go, the Tlingit, the Kwakutl. There's nowhere else for us to go. And the scary thing is if, if the Cree Nation, when the Cree Nation says that's enough of this, the Cree Nation stands up and says, get off our land. That's Cree Nation stretches from Northern Labrador all the way across Northern Canada, all the way to British Columbia, the Cree Nation. And if the Cree said, get off our land, how powerful would that be? What's Canada going to do? When the, when the people of British Columbia recognize the, the nations that are there, what is there, 68 different First Nations over in British Columbia? And of the 68, I believe 64 of them do not have a treaty. That land still belongs to them. That land still belongs to them. Tell that to, to Westhauser and Westheiser and and the other forestry companies, though, ah, it's our land. It's our land. No treaties over there. At least there's treaties in southern Ontario. At least there's a Holdeman Tract agreement that gave the land to the, to the Haudenosaunee six miles on the other side of the, of the Grand River. Holy. How much of that do they have left? How did, that, how did they lose it all? What happened for them to lose all that land? All those towns to grow up and all those farms to be built. What's the truth of our history? We look back and see all these, we can, we can go through all these things behind us, all these things behind us. And it's our job to say, okay, stop for a minute. That happened yesterday. That happened to my grandfather. That happened to my great, great grandfather. What are we going to do? We're not going to do what he did. We're not going to do what she did. We're not going to do what, what that guy John McDonald did. Put those Indians on reservations. We're not going to do what Egerton Ryerson did. Put all those Indians in a residential school. We'll teach them how to be English. We'll teach them the right way, he said. Take the Indian out of the Indian. Get rid of this Indian problem. Since when were we a problem? We're a problem when we stand in your way or when you think we're in the way of your progress and your profits. Those words are, are powerful words. 
on Wall Street, profits, 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 profits. We got to make a profit today. We got to live a good life as our ancestors. That's why we're here, so live a good life and understand our relationship to each other, our relationship to all of us, all of creation out here, the grasses and the seasons and the moon. And then I saw Mars. <gasps> Did you see Mars? And then like, it's pretty cool, a nice red dot. Pretty cool. Understanding and seeing and teaching our kids to understand and see and relate. What's that book, The Last Child in the Woods? Kids are, are afraid of being out in nature because they grew up in a city or they don't know that they have a relationship to all of creation. They're afraid of the snakes. They're afraid of the bugs. Bear's going to get me. Makwa. Makwa is our, our relative. Makwa and Dodem. It's my clan. Should I be afraid of the bear in the bush? No. Should I be smart in the bush? Yes. But I don't have to be afraid of the bear. I can be smart. That's different. Knowing who we are. Knowing who we are and how we're going to live this land, on this land. And tomorrow you're going to see all these orange shirts. Well, some of them were today because the schools apparently are getting ready for tomorrow. I think they're shut down in some places. All these orange shirts. Oh, it's really nice. And in, 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 in Winnipeg, some non-Indigenous company made lots of money making those orange shirts. Hmm. Non-Indigenous company made lots of money making orange shirts. How does that sound? Does that sound right to you? I'm just asking. It's all this stuff that we have to reconcile. How much longer are we going to Keep the Indian down. Keep kicking the Indian around. All these laws to, to stop us from being going to school, all this law, all these laws to stop us. Heck, there were laws we couldn't get off the reservation for crying out loud. You had to have a pass. And some white guy had to say, yeah, okay, Fred, you can you can go shopping today. Oh, thank you, boss. Yeah. It's still like that. It's still like that. It's these non-indigenous businesses that are creating and continuing. Anyway, I see a face there that just popped up, which means I may be going on a long <laughs> while. Well, um, I just want, can I just, bonjour. I just, uh, it is up to all of us, all of us on this land to decide what we're going to do and how we're going to live the, on this land. There's so much to learn, so much to that's out there. Our Anishinaabe authors and our Anishinaabe storytellers and, and every community has a powwow and all the time, be in the game, be in the game. Come and join us. Come and dance with us. Come and feast with us. Come and share with us because that's what life is about. Dancing and feasting and sharing and doing what we need to do so we can dance and feast and share. So I'll make this stuff. I'll take care of my business. I'll take care of of the things I need so we can share together. That's, that's what was the original invitation when, when those people came across on a boat and it continues to be. <sighs> this is a good life. And the sun's going down tonight in Western, um, Western Manitoba. And it's, it's just so beautiful. And, and I, I appreciate all of you being here. And I hope there's been a word or two that, that gives you joy in your heart, in your spirit. Because that's what this is about, joy in your spirit. Because it's, there's so much, and there's so much we need to be honoring and remembering so that our children's 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 children have something to say, oh yeah, way back then, these guys did this and now we got clean water today. <laughs> I can go to Lake Ontario and dip my cup and drink from Lake Ontario. I can go to the Grand River and dip my cup and drink from the Grand River <gasps> because way back then, those guys did something for us. How powerful is that thought? I'll leave you with. <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> Miigwech for uh, welcoming us to your home um, where you are today. 
Um, thank you for the healing of your story. Um, it moved me greatly. Thank you so much, Miigwech. Uh, before I stop recording though, I was hoping uh, just for um, a little bit of a conversation. Many of my clients are reading Indigenous information and trying to um, gain a deeper understanding and also wanting to do more uh, for nearby communities and outreach. Is there anything you could say to materials that you would recommend they read or how do you reach out? Like nearby, we have uh, the Mohawk Institute where they're trying to save the evidence. Is there anything you can say about the appropriate way to, what you would recommend for reading a good way to reach out and be involved? I welcome the question and I, I uh, hope people are still listening to, there's, um, there is so much out there. And I, the book I mentioned originally, the Mashomo's book, you can start with that. Just, just to find, you know, get a start. Who are these Mishnabi people's Ojibwe's? And, and you can read the Mashomo's book and, oh, that's a whole different way of seeing the world. Uh, there's a book called 20 thing, 21 Things to Know About the Indians. Is that the name of the book, uh, Allison? 21 Things You Need to Know About the First Nations or something, something like that. We yes. have that one. Yeah, I think you probably have it at the library as well, yeah. I'm sure it's at the library. Um, any book you pick up will be a starting spot. And really that's, that's the, big, the biggest thing. Uh, years and years ago, I picked up a book called Seven Arrows. And yes. it helped me on, I was, you remember that book? Holy, it got, it got blackballed for a while, but it, it was a really wonderful book. Um, and then the, there's so much to no, learn about. I mean, some of these stories, uh, there's a wonderful man, uh, Louis Bird from the Northern uh, James Bay, Hudson Bay area, Northern Ontario, Louis Bird. And he tells wonderful stories. And it's, it's about seeing and hearing and feeling a whole different way of being. And that's what the stories are about. They, well, sure, they, you know, our authors share that and our, our teachers share that and our, our knowledge keepers share that. And it's a way of seeing the world in a whole different way. And in this Nabi moment, in all the languages, there's no right and wrong. It's not this or that. It just is. It, there is a whole different way of seeing things. And yes, you, you know, Columbus had a whole different way of seeing things. And was it wrong? We're not going to judge it. We're going to say he saw things different. And our journey, our own road to knowledge is about what do you see? How do you see things? And, and what are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to do? How are you going to establish your relationship? Indigenous Rights by uh, Chelsea Vowell. Oh, I've heard of that one. I haven't read that one myself, but that's cool. Yeah. And that's just, it, I'll introduce Allison here. I don't know if she's in my screen. She's the top right corner. Yes, <laughs> I see Allison. If you speak, Allison, you'll appear. Yeah, hi there. Yes, I'm. Hi, David. Hi, Jackie. And everyone else. And everyone else. Allison works in, uh, with us at goodminds.com. And she's been working there for, for a few years now. And she works out of the, in the South and out of the Brantford office. Yes. And uh, so that's why I referred to, I was, directing that question to her. There's lots of books. I mean, that's, if you go to goodminds.com, I mean, all our books are from Indigenous authors, all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's even one that's just purely non-Native. I don't even know. Um, we have a few, but those books have been um, brought into Good Minds because there have been uh, cooperation with um, the, the Indigenous community or... Um, there's been a consultant and so on. So, yeah. and yeah, we, we do meet the Indigenous protocols, I would say for like 99.9% .9 of our books. It is an evolving collection because we've had, um, we've been in business for 20 years, over, over 20 years now. So, um, you know, there's a few that are, we still have in our system, but generally, yes, it's, it's an Indigenous, that's the, the profile of our company. It's uh, Indigenous authors. 
Very good. So thank you, um, Dave, for being here. I think right now I'd like to give everyone an opportunity just to ask a few questions. I know people yes, are probably yes, looking please. forward to that. So I'm just going to stop the recording.